Luca de paraphernalia and all the ornaments that John Lear has in his desk. What do you see? All reptilian looking things. It's all reptilian. Amazing. Just like I was saying, this guy doesn't want to tell us the truth that it's all reptilian, but look at the stuff in his desk. A dragon. And a dragon man carrying a woman. Look at that shit. That's a woman legs. What? The dragon man is in the tail of the of the dragon. Man, he must to pay a little fortune for that statue. It doesn't look cheap. And it looks really evil too. Look at that. Well, that is really a lot. Look at the reptilian dude right there. The reptilian head. What I was saying all along is made out of crystal. It's all crystals. Oh my goodness. And look at this. It's that, this little ornament here. Oh my goodness. Well, that is Kika. Look at this. The reptilian man head right there. Let's see, you can, can you tell the eyes? So the eyes right there on the forehead, the mouth, and look at this. It's all made out of quartz. Look to me like quartz. Might be some other type of crystal, but it's all reptilian, all of it. And that's why they point the camera to that thing. Well, that's the centerpiece on the on the desk. And that's you know John Lear fire. It was in the one of the engineers designing of the first electromagnetic flying saucer the United States built the military industrial complex. That's why he is, they haven't wiped him out because of that, because he's done connections. And because he is in the loop. Well, that's the telltale right there. That centerpiece tells everything about what this guy is about. I didn't pay attention the first time I saw this video. Look at the size of that table. And yes. German. Yeah, the crystal I gave to my mom um, many years ago, and then when she passed away, I took it and put it down here for my dragons to guard. These dragons. Do you have names for your dragons? No, no names. Did it eat feeding? Pardon? Did it eat feeding? Uh, yeah, that's that's what we're waiting to do with that scene. Well, no.
Okay, John, secret space programs. Okay, this is an example of what those orbiting, <clears throat> 24 orbiting satellites that we put up there, incidentally, in addition to the 24 orbiting satellites, we've got two command and control. And this Where did the towers go? For the Navy That's operation, true. if you uh, tune in on the uh, web. Right, it's just for that. SPA, uh, WAR, Spade War, right, and you see everything that, that they do. Anyway, of those 24 satellites, uh, some of them have different technologies. This technology is called uh, molecular dissociation. And what it does is uh, it disassociates, disassociates the molecular uh, composition of uh, a property, either a steel or, or steel and concrete, down to dust. And the interesting thing is that it doesn't stop there. It, it goes on to, to nothing. That's why, and that's called non-self-quenching, and that's why when we see the World Trade Center uh, that we see a big, huge pond there because the original original project uh, idea for the World Trade Center was to build buildings right there, but, you know, much bigger, much taller and everything, but everything they put up there immediately decayed. Uh, rust would uh, rust the steel almost instantaneously within a couple days it would just rust to nothing so they had to move a pool there and that pool is trying to absorb the non-self quenching uh, abilities of this of whatever they did because this was the first time that they fired it <clears throat> at that uh, huge uh, capacity so now when you have, have a uh, look down on there you'll see the buildings and then the water in between so we hope that you so I hope the new trade center is going to stick down, keep standing. It'll be interesting to see what uh, what's going on. I haven't followed it really that uh, closely, but uh, it should stay up. So what sort of further use would they have with such technology? For what? What further use would they have with uh, oh, no, such technology no, having used it on 9-11? Where do you think this is taking us? Well, it's a combination. It's not only weapons. They can, uh, uh, along with HARP, they can uh, make and uh, motivate, guide uh, hurricanes. That's how Hurricane Aaron got up to 100 miles off the coast during 9-11. Uh, six days before, they generated it and then walked it up the coast and it just sat there. And they used part of the hurricane uh, as the force for what they're doing with the molecular dissociation. Now, I don't know how they do it. That's what we're going to find out. That's what they they've figured out, but I haven't figured it out yet. Same thing with Katrina. <clears throat> they made Katrina and uh, got it uh, boiling and everything, and then walked it right straight into New Orleans for whatever purpose. You know, they, it was a social experiment or whatever they wanted to do. <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, uh, Oklahoma City, the Mirror Building, they did the same thing. You can take, uh, I think there's a photo in here that you can put right next to the photos of the uh, World Trade Center, and it's the same identical um, uh, damage that uh, was done at the mirror building as was done on 9-11. Uh, so the explosions on 9-11, what was that about then? Which one? The basement? Uh, yeah, the explosions in the building before, you know, it fell as Yeah, you know, I've seen, you can see them go pop, 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 I don't know what, uh, what they are. The extra measure to make it fall. But did people see planes or what did they see? If they saw a plane, it was a hologram because there was no other, there were no real planes there. As a pilot, is it feasible for somebody to fly a jet aircraft in the way that those three planes flew? Not the first time. Uh, if he had practice, like uh, four or five times, he could have done it, but not the first time. Now, you support, the, or you have a, you mentioned something about the pilot for 9 11? Truth for 9 11 or something? Uh, yeah, pilots uh, for Truth 9 11. Uh, I'm a core member of that, but uh, uh, the problem was they will not consider that there were no airplanes, at least the. Uh, the management. Now, maybe some other people do, but but I consider that there. I'm what you call a no-planer. There were no planes on 9/11. Uh, 
Uh, but people have a hard time believing that, and I don't know well, why. Well, they all saw it on TV. It must be real. And all <laughs> thought they heard it. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem. And uh, I saw it on TV. <clears throat> Therein leaves the problem. People think uh, they see it on TV, it must be real. They saw, they saw the moon landing on TV. I saw it. I watched them get out. <laughs> So so I, I believe it kind of could have been a hologram. But you, you believe it? I believe it could have been a hologram. Yeah. You know, I. Uh, but I know people who said we saw it flew in, standing on the ground, and we heard the sounds. So it, it it's not like it's only made for TV. It's bigger than that. In case that's true. But I also can tell you that Russell Clark. He told me back at the first, when I went to the convention, the UFO convention, he, I asked him about this, and he said this was a hologram. I said, and I, I couldn't believe it, but you know, now there are more people saying it. Well, the, the point is, how can they project holograms of that size? Here, that, and therein lies the problem, because people are, uh, when you see hologram, they're thinking of a Walt Disney little pixie dancing around in a little um, uh, darkness area, uh, that's all they know about holograms. They don't know that 20 years ago uh, we could project a hologram <clears throat> with uh, heat, uh, noise, light, speed, anything we wanted, anywhere. And uh, <clears throat> we used that on 9-11. Uh, right now, the television industry is ready uh, to bring out uh, television uh, quality programs that you can put right on your desk and you have a little uh, little thing here it, you can raise it up like this I mean you can enlarge it uh, you can bring it down to small you can move it over there you can move it over there wherever you want and it looks just like there and you can stand all around it and see it from all sides <clears throat> and uh, the Japanese uh, a year ago announced that not only do they have that but they uh, they have it uh, they have touchy feely 3d holograms that you can touch it. Uh, Ten years ago, they invited uh, 30 of the uh, top TV uh, industrials, producers and stuff, and uh, similar to that, they took them into a uh, small theater uh, that accommodated about 40 or 50 people, and sat them down, and they said, the future of television. A normal light like that, the lights didn't go out, and the guy comes from behind the curtain, he looked uh, maybe uh, well over 60, uh, white hair, uh, glasses, uh, when he started talking, is obviously uh, Eastern European, uh, with an accent, uh, he started talking about uh, the TV, how the uh, the uh, tubes were initially made, the cathode tubes, and uh, how it developed into this and that and so on. And it, as he's talking, he gets off the podium, walks up one aisle, down that aisle, looks at the audience, takes off his glasses, cleans them, walks up one aisle, down another aisle, gets back up on the podium. Everybody, by about this time, everybody's getting bored of stuff they've already heard. And he says, uh, well, um, I want to thank you very much. And then just turned him off like that in front of everybody. <laughs> this is like what you're saying, but this is what they can do, but they can't bring it in right now because it's too close to 9-11. People are going to associate you know, when they were yelling at John Lear, you know, five years ago, saying this was possible, and saying it's impossible, there has to be a screen, there has to be a background, there has to be something we can project it on. You know, it's bullshit. They don't know what's going on or how things develop, so. Joel, I'm disturbed. What? I mean, you've not seen, uh, I don't know, you know, 